doctors, molecular biologists say we are our DNA. Like it or not, we inherit traits and diseases from past generations. And there's nothing you can do about it. But my guest says, untrue. And we got proof. Next. Hello, I'm here with Jeff Nutt. And I have to tell you something. He's provoking me to jealousy. At eight years of age, he gets caught up into heaven. I didn't even know who Jesus was until I was 30. What happened to you, Jared? Oh my goodness, what an amazing experience. I was caught up to heaven when I was eight years old. I was a voracious reader as a child and I always liked to read books. And one moment I found myself reading books in my bedroom and the next moment I'm standing in heaven. I'm standing in the third heaven and I can see the glory, it's tangible. I'm standing in a street it was a street of gold. The streets in heaven are paved with transparent gold. Well, I didn't know this when I was eight years of old. Of course. I didn't know. So, so I'm, I'm taking all of this experience into my life, into that moment, and I'm having this, this encounter with, with heaven. I hadn't yet encountered Jesus. He was letting me ease into the process, and I'm absorbing this as an eight-year-old. And as I look around this beautiful oasis of heaven, I see a tree. And this tree is, ex is split down two sides of a, of a river. Hmm. And I thought, that's phenomenal. I didn't have a paradigm for this when I was eight years you old. You hadn't read this in the Bible. I hadn't read this in the Bible. And, I, and I, later on, I learned in the Bible that Revelation 21, it talks about the tree of life coming down on both sides of the river. So as I'm taking this, this experience in, and I'm absorbing what's around me, the next moment I found myself standing in the throne room of heaven. Hmm. I'm surrounded by angels. As far as I could see, I'm surrounded by angels and they're singing, holy, 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 glory to God in the highest. And that's all I could hear and it was worship. And I just wanted with my little spirit to be able to participate, to take advantage of what I was being immersed in. Now, but as a young child, or actually any age, was there any fear going on in this amazing encounter you had? That's the beauty of all this. There was no fear. I knew exactly where I was, and I knew whose I was. And in that moment, as I'm standing in that throne room, it was perfect peace. It was perfect love. And it was just as scripture says, perfect love casts out all fear. There wasn't room for fear in the moment that I was in, and that didn't even cross my mind. But as I'm standing there, I'm wondering to myself, why, why am I here? Why am I looking at this amazing experience? And in that moment, I transferred to Jesus' lap, and I'm sitting in the lap of Jesus. And he's smiling and he's looking at me and we're having great conversations. And this is the best part. We were having conversations that were well beyond my years. I was not intellectually at a place to understand mm -hmm. the conversations that I was having with Jesus. But what he was doing was preparing me. And he was instilling in me what I would need for my walk with Christ through him in my ministry. It was remarkable. Now, I, I've had an experience with so many people I've interviewed that have been to heaven that they don't remember everything. But throughout their life, it's as if not just that information, but much information was downloaded to them. And at strategic times, it's revealed to them. It's, have you found that to be true? I found that's exactly what's happening to me. That as I grow in my ministry and as I grow in my faith in Christ and I rely on Him, He's revealing to me the conversations that we had and He's revealing to me the next steps for ministry. And it's glorious and it's remarkable that He's leading me by the hand one step at a time. And I don't ever have to feel like I'm coming from behind because it's His next step and it's His next thing for me. Mm -hmm. How'd that conversation with Jesus end, by the way? Oh, it's glorious. I remember it like it was yesterday. He brought out a bowl of fruit, and he set it on the table in front of me. And I, and I said, Jesus, what is that? And he looked at me, and he said, this 
is the fruit of your life and this will be the fruit of your ministry. He says, and no matter what you do and no matter where you go, I will be with you and I will never leave you. Jeb, there are people that needed to hear what you just said. Would you speak to them right now? Oh, it'd be my pleasure. Jesus wants you to know that he will never leave you, that he will never forsake you. He's gentle, he's kind, and he's waiting for our yes. Will you say yes to Jesus today? And will you allow him to guide you, to take you by his hand, and to walk you into your destiny, into the path that he's called you into, the glorious person that you were created to be? You are a deliverance minister. I am a deliverance minister by the grace of God. Deliverance ministers, they minister freedom. We deliver the perfect love of Jesus' heart to the individuals who desperately need it the most. People walk through life with traumas from their generational lineage, things that we've done in our own lives that have, that have caused trauma on our bodies, that have invited the enemy into our own lives. We administer God's perfect love to bring freedom to those individuals so that they can experience life to the fullest. Jerob has discovered the power in deliverance ministry, and then he discovered that science was agreeing with him. Be right back. <laughs>